Statistics and Excel. Histogram versus bar chart. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds and getting ready for a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually these are just items that we picked from the YouTube shopping affiliate program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and use ourselves. Here we have a Western Digital WD Elements 20 terabyte USB 3.0 desktop external hard drive we use as part of our backup system, noting that if you lower the number of terabytes of storage, the price will lower dramatically as well. When you're thinking about a backup system, you're usually thinking about an online system or an external hard drive system like this or ideally some combination between the two giving you some redundancy. You can also work directly from an external hard drive like this, but there are some drawbacks to doing that. One being, if you use this as your primary drive you're working from, it's no longer a backup drive and you're going to need a backup system, possibly another external hard drive and or some kind of cloud backup system. And if you're working on something that takes up a lot of short term memory, a lot of RAM as you're working on it, such as video editing, the external hard drive can slow up the system. So you might want to come up with some kind of system where you download the project you're working on to your computer, to your C drive, or possibly to a solid state drive, which is a much more expensive uh, external hard drive as you do the work. Once the work is done, then save the project to an external hard drive such as this. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet and therefore you can start with a blank worksheet. If you do have access to this workbook, then there's three tabs down below. Example, practice, and blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can focus in on the heart of the practice problem. The blank tab where we will be working will just have the data set so we can practice formatting in Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what the end result will be. We're gonna take our data, we're gonna sort our data, we'll calculate the average and the median, but our major focus is looking at the differences between a histogram that we will create from the data and a bar chart that we will create from the data. Now these two things look very similar, but there's differences in how they will work and we can actually create, in essence, a histogram from the bar chart. So let me give you an idea of what I mean here. If we go to the insert tab up top and we go to the charts group, then most of the time, the first thing that comes to people's mind when they think of charts is the classic bar charts up here. Uh, but the histogram is here. It looks similar, but it's different. So we'll think about what are the differences between a histogram and a bar chart and we'll think about how we can basically use bar charts to create a histogram, which can have its own uses from time to time, and will also give us an idea of the similarities between the histogram and the bar chart. So let's jump back on over to our blank tab. Now, if you don't have your data set here, then you could copy this data set if you just wanna type it in, or you can create your own data set using some of the methods we talked about in a prior presentation. Most of this data is kind of uh, around, it, we're imagining wages here. So it's around like 65,000 to like 80,000 uh, is the data set. And it's got a shape that's that's somewhat, you know, bell curved or uh, kind of shape to it. That's the general concept. So if you want to put together a data set, something like that, then you can practice with that or you can use this data set. So I'm going to start by formatting the entire sheet like I do every time because all we have is data. I haven't formatted the sheet. So I'm going to put my cursor in the triangle up top, 
right click on the selected area i'm going to format the sheet for my underlined formatting which i like to be at currency negative numbers bracketed and red no dollar sign i don't need the decimals right now because these are these are rounded numbers and the decimals are not going to be relevant to me so i'm going to remove the decimals and then okay so now i can format the cells they have a comma in it they look like a number format that will be my baseline formatting I'll also select the entire thing, go to the Home tab, Font Group, and I'm going to make it boldened because I think that stands out a little bit more for the presentations. And you might just like that too. Although if you make everything bold, then making an individual thing bold doesn't have the same kind of effect. Right? But then we can, I'm going to hold Control down and scroll in. So now I'm zooming into the data. I'm currently at the 250%. All right, so the first thing I want to do is sort my data. So I want to put a row above this so I can put a header on it and just call it wages. I'm imagining this is data related to wages. I could do that by selecting the entire row, which is easier than selecting one cell and inserting above it due to the fact that there's nothing on the right hand side that's going to get messed up if I add an entire row and it saves a click, right? So if I click on the one here and then I select the entire row, right click and insert, I don't have to tell Excel, hey, move uh, the cell down. It, that's the only option it has is to move it down, right? It can't move it up because it would go, right? We're always moving down. It's the entire row. Okay, so we're going to say this is wages. And so there we have that. I'll center it, our home tab, alignment, and center. Not, not that center. I wanted this center. <laughs> and then... I'm going to make it into a table, which is what I typically do. I feel more comfortable when the data is in a table format. So I'm going to put my cursor anywhere in the data because there's no blank cells. I could put it anywhere in the data. And when I go to the insert tab up top, the tables group, and then to the table, it will guess that I want the whole table. And you can see it by the dancing ants around there that it's picking the tables that uh, we want. So there it is. And so now we can sort the data. And so I can hit the drop down up top and possibly sort it from Z to A or A to Z. Let's sort it from uh, A to Z. So the lowest point is 55 that we talked, we looked at this last time. The biggest point is at uh, 84,000. If I wanted to calculate the average and the median, I'm gonna make this column shorter. Notice every time I create a table, if I wanna calculate the, the average and the media based on that data, I'm not gonna start typing next to the table because I don't want anything actually touching the table because Excel might get mixed up that that's part of the table. So traditionally what you wanna do is put a skinny column. So I'll make a skinny B so that I could tell Excel, hey, these things are different, keep them separate. It's like the, it's like the vegetables and the potatoes on the plate. You don't want that. I don't like them all mushed together. And that's how Excel is too. So then I'm going to say this is going to be the mean uh, and the av or let's say or the average. So remember, there's a couple different ways that we can calculate this, right? We can use the, the function method function, which is the average. It uses an average calculation. So equals average. So we just double click on the function. It has an equal sign, the function, and then the brackets and then the argument down below and we just select the field. Now, the easiest way to do that is to put your cursor here, control shift down arrow. And now I could just hit enter because that'll take me back up top. But if I want to check the formula, I can see it in the formula bar right there. And I can hold control and backspace, which takes me back to the top. So now I can see the formula here. Now, technically I should close it up, control uh, zero. But I don't have to. If I don't have that last bracket and I hit enter, uh, Excel is nice enough not to get mad at me or anything usually. So it's going to say enter. There it is. Now I can also do that average. If you if we recalculate the average, we could say okay, the average is going to be the the uh, the let's say the manual manual method. Let's say we sum the whole data set, the famous function equals sum, 
Shift 9. I'm using the keystrokes now. I'm going to use the keyboard now to do this because this is a familiar formula. Left, 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 up, up, up. Notice I'm not using the mouse at all because I'm trying to be super nerdy, cool. And then control shift down. So that now I've summed it up. Now I could just hit enter. I can see the formula up top, but if I want to see it in the cell, I can say control backspace. There it is. I don't really need to close this one up either. So I'm just going to hit enter, sums it up. And then I want to count. So I know that I can do it this way. I can say, well, this is two and this goes down to, to 51. So like, so 52. So I would think like 51 would be the count, but I can also use the count function, which equals the count. So there's our count function. And once again, I'll, I'll, I can put my cursor over here with the arrows. Control shift down arrow and then there it is in the formula bar. I could just hit enter but I'm going to hit control backspace and enter and then divide. So uh, divide divide <clears throat> that's not spelled right. I know it's a equals up up. So now I'm just using the keystrokes again. So I want to take I want you I want Excel to take what's in cell D5 which is D5 divided by slash up once. Notice I had to hit up, not down. It's not gonna, Excel's not gonna start from the last cell I was in. It's gonna go back to the formula. So take what was in cell D5 divided by what's in cell D6 and enter, and there's our average. So let's say, let's make this indented, home tab, alignment, indent, and I can indent these again, indent, and let's just call this the average. I won't say divide, I won't put the function in there. I'll just say average. And then the median is gonna be, we can use the function for the median equals, most people just use the median, you could use quartile too, but you, I'll just use the median function. And so same thing, I'm just gonna go up here and say, all right, control shift down, and then uh, control backspace and enter. So there it is on the manual method. Man, manual method, I can just say it's it's the one in the middle, right? If I counted all of these and then I picked the one in the middle, 70,009 uh, is in the middle, right? So right there. So meaning if, if I counted the ones, you know, below it and above it, uh, I get to 25 below it and uh, 25 above it, right? So it's in the middle. So that would be just picking, pick the one in the middle, just like Rocky does when he's in a fight and he sees three of them out there. Then he, then just like his Mickey said, he hits the one in the middle. Uh, in any case, I don't know, Rocky, no one knows Rocky anymore. What are you talking about? Uh, let, 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 let's go ahead and make this blue. Uh, let's go to the home tab font group. I use this blue down here. If you don't have that blue, you can go to the more colors and use this blue. And right there, uh, I use that Excel is fun guy I used to use that home tab font group. I'm going to put borders around it, borders around it. And then let's just make a little bit more. Well, let's, I'll keep it at that. All right. Well, now let's make a histogram <clears throat> from this data. We'll make a histogram from it, which is easy to do. We can just select the entire uh, data set. One way you could do that is selecting like where you have the down arrow. That's just showing the data uh, without without the headers uh, on it. And so I'll pick that up and I'll go, uh, let's go to the insert tab and then chart group. And I'm not doing the bar chart, but a histogram. So I'll select the histogram. There's our standard histogram. So I'll put that in play. I'm, I'm holding control scrolling down a bit so we can see the full histogram. So there we have it. Okay, so I'm gonna delete this thing up top. So let's delete that. Oh, not the whole thing. Undo, control Z or undo. I just want the title to go away, all right? And then I'll hit the plus button. And then we want to see uh, the, the access data sets. An easier way to do it possibly is just to double click on this item down here. So I wanna look at these buckets that it made. So it made these buckets and then put the information that lands between these buckets. Now I want to go to the bin size over here and I'm going to put my own bin size, which is 2000. Let's say the buckets 
bin size uh, is 2000 and we get something that looks like this. So what is the histogram doing? It's saying, hey, look, everything that's in between 55 and 57,000, I'm gonna count those, how many there are and put that amount here, one in this case. And then everything in here from 67 to 69,000, they counted and put here, looks like around seven, right? And I could put the numbers in here. Let's put the numbers in here. Now, I think the easiest way to do that is to actually right click on the data itself right here. We're going to select the data and it says here, uh, add data labels. So I'm going to add the data labels and there's the data labels. If I select the data labels, we can go to the insert or home tab font and embolden them. We can make them, you know, larger uh, if we so choose. So now we've got our data labels. So here we had seven that fall into this bucket, 19 that fall into this bucket. Uh, 15 that fell into this bucket and and so on and so forth. So obviously we can change the size of the buckets and we'll we'll look more about that in future presentations. But right now we can say, okay, well, what, is, what would happen if I made a bar, a bar uh, chart? Now, if I insert a bar chart and I just use this data, like if I just say, take this data and make a bar chart. So now I'm gonna go to the insert tab charts and make a bar chart of it just a standard one that's not that useful right because what it's doing is it's taking it's just making its own like number set down here and saying how many how many how many ones fall into that but the problem is that that we have a a, a more nuanced data so we, that's why we need the buckets right that's why we need these buckets so what the the histogram is doing is nicely sorting the data into buckets but we could do that ourselves. And there's a couple ways that we, we could do this. You could use like a, a histogram or you can use uh, you can use an array and the, and the two. Uh, so I'll try to show both methods. The array thing is going to be an easier thing to do, but I think it's easier to kind of see what's going on if we use kind of like the formula method first. So uh, let's 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 say that we're going to we're going to say that I would like to put my buckets in place between 55,000 and 57,000. I'm arranging my buckets between uh, between the, the low and the high, and I'm going to have all my buckets increase like we did up top by 2,000. So this is going to be this plus 2,000, and this is going to be this uh, plus 2,000. So we're kind of naming the bucket size. Now, now that I have these two cells in here, I can copy that down to get all of my buckets. So I'm going to put my cursor here. I'm going to select these two. I'm going to put my cursor on the fill handle and we're going to drag that down until we get to like 77. We got to get to like 85, I think. Fill handle, dragging it down 83, one more time to 85. So there's now I'm going to use a kind of fancy formula so I can put these two things together with a dash between them so that I can get a label for our bar chart that looks something like this. Now this is the type of thing that works quite well when you're working with text. So for example, I'm going to say this equals and then I'm going to point to this cell. So what's in C17, C17, but I don't want to add it to something else or anything like that. I'm going to hit a space and I'm going to hit control and so I'm going to say and and then I want to put text in it. So when I want to put actual text in it, I have to tell Excel that it's a text item by putting quotes around the text. So I'm going to say uh, shift, uh, I'm going to put quotes, and then I'm going to put a dash. That's what the text that I want, and then I'll close up the quotes. So what will happen if I was just to leave it like this, it would put the 55,000, and then it would add that dash as a text uh, item for it. And then I'm going to say space and another and, and then I also want this here as well. So now it's going to be putting together what's in cell C17 and this text in quotes of a dash, and then what's in cell 50 in cell uh, D17. So if I say enter, there we have it. Now if you if you if that's too tedious to do and you don't want to do it that way, then you could just type it in there. You could say uh, uh, if you don't, if you don't want to have a function, you don't have, you don't start with a function 57,000 dash 59,000, but then of course you have to type it in going down. So what's nice about a function like this 
is that you can then grab that on the fill handle and drag it down, right? So now I've got my uh, data labels. And then again, I'm gonna use a somewhat uh, fancy formula uh, to count and try to say that I want to be picking up from this data set what is in between the, the 55,000 and the 57,000. So to do that, I'm gonna use a pretty fancy formula here. So before we start the formula, note we have a bit of an issue if we have a number that falls right on the line. So for example, if we look at this first bucket, we're including everything from 55,000 to 57,000, then everything from 57,000 to 59,000, 59,000 to 61,000. But what if, for example, the number is exactly 59,000? Do we include it in this bucket or do we include it in the bucket below? Now the general rule is that we would include it in the bucket above and then the bucket below would not have anything that's 59,000 exactly, but everything that is greater than 59,000 up to and including the 61,000. Now that also leads to a bit of a problem on this first line right here, because that 55,000, we want uh, in this first bucket to include what's in the 59,000, the 55,000, because we want that to fall in that first bucket and we have one that falls right there. So I could, make this a little bit lower i could make this forty nine thousand, so that i can pick up everything you know from forty nine thousand uh and above which is a little bit different than our histogram over here but that's what i'll pick up so that we can have the same formula all the way through all right so now we'll do our calculation this is going to be equal to we're going to use our count if calculation but not the normal one that we looked at last time instead count ifs because we're going to have multiple criterias the criteria being that it has to be greater than the the first area 49,000 in this case and then less than or equal to the top criteria the 57,000 so i'm going to say count ifs and so here's our here's our formula here's the first argument in the formula and so I need the criteria range. I'm gonna scroll up, I'm gonna put my cursor on the little arrow so I can set the drop down, dancing ants around just the data. Scrolling back down, I can see the formula here, I can see the formula up top. To get to the second argument, I select comma. So now I'm on argument number two, which is the actual criteria. So if I was gonna put a criteria which was just like one number, uh, then, then I can refer to the cell. But uh, I need a more complex criteria because I need it to be greater than the 49,000. And so that means I'm entering text. So I'm gonna have to put brackets around the greater than. So brackets around or quotes, I mean, around the greater than. And then I've got to connect that to this number. So I have to use an and in order to do that and then pick up the 49,000. And so that's gonna be our first argument. It's gotta be greater than the uh, 49,000. Notice if I just hit enter right there, if I stop my formula right there and enter, I'm at 51 uh, items, which seems reasonable. Let's, let's double click on it again and continue the argument. So I'm gonna go to the end of this argument again and add another criteria. So I'm gonna say comma, the criteria range. I have to select the range again, scrolling up, putting my cursor on the A where I have an arrow dancing ants around the data comma takes me to the next argument which is the criteria and i want this to be less than or equal to the 57,000. so i have to put the quotes because i'm going to put kind of text in here and i have to put the less than first and then the equals so less than and then the equals less than or equal to and then in the quotes and i need to tie that together with an and so we're going to say and and then I'm gonna pick the second cell, 57,000, and there's our second argument. I'm gonna close up the brackets, shift zero, closing it up, so it's kind of, a, kind of a long formula, but there we have it. Now it picks up one, which makes sense, right? Because we just have that 55,000. So then I can select that, and I should be able to just copy it down. Let's copy it down one time. Fill handle, copy it down, and see if that uh, picks up the second one in the same uh, fashion. Notice there's a bit of a problem here. Hold on a sec, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit enter. Now I messed up my second range. I'm gonna start this one at 57,000. 
So now this this first one was at 49, the second one's at 57, and then we're 2,000 apart. So now it's picking up zero, which ties into our numbers above. Let's copy it down. I'm gonna put my cursor on the fill handle and copy it down. And so now we've got 19 in this bucket, right? Which is 19 in this bucket, 69 to 71, and the the seven in this bucket. So that looks about right, right? So, so now, now I can use my bar chart. So now I can select these items and I can say, I'm going to just insert a bar chart, which will basically build a histogram because I've created my own buckets. So I'm going to go to the, to the insert up top after I've selected those two uh, rows or columns and then the charts and graphs. And instead of the histogram this time, we'll make just a normal uh, bar chart. So we'll make the bar chart. I'm going to pull this to the to the side so we have it over here. And let's put these like on top of each other. So I'll bring this one over a bit. So there's one on top of the other. And then I'm going to delete the title. And let's see if I can click on this right click and uh, and say if I can add data labels. Uh, add data labels. So there we have it. So there's our our general concept with it. So now we've got the 1, 7, 19, 15, 7, 1, and 1, 1, 7, 19, 15, 7, 1, and 1. And so you could see, you know, the re so hopefully that gives an idea of, of basically how you can build your own kind of histogram from the bar chart. Now note that that could be actually useful to do because uh, if you have a bar chart like this, you can actually add a second set of data uh, a little bit more easily than possibly the histogram so that you can compare two kind of shapes of the data on the same bar chart. Now also note that the bar chart has similar features on how do you how you deal with it. So if I double click on these bars, for example, sometimes you might think the histogram has some wider uh, uh, bars, right? So you can double click on this and I'm into these bars over here. And I can say that if I want you know, to make them skinnier or I want to close the width between them, right? So now I've got it, you know, almost touching each other, right? So you've got something so that might give you more of a, a histogram like feel if you lessen the gap between some of these. Let's do it this way. So I could see it gradually. <laughs> so there we go. Something like that. All right. And then, so, so that's the general, so that's the general idea. And, and that can be a useful tool. Now, before we wrap this up, I just want to note that you can, uh, this is somewhat of, of a tedious process. If you, if you use the, the, another function, which, which is like a newer kind of function, it's a less intuitive to me, but faster once you understand it, then you can get to this data a little bit faster and you could build this format a little bit quicker, which would be useful again, if you wanted to kind of put two of these on top of each other, for example. So to do that, we're just going to put our endpoints on uh, that we want on the endpoint. So fifth, just this column. So if I reconstruct that column down here, just the endpoints, we start at the 57,000. And then I'm going to do the same thing we did before by just saying equals the one above it, plus 2000. And then I'll copy that down until we get to the 85,000, putting my cursor on that second one, fill handle, dragging down until we get to that 85,000. So there we have it. And so now I'm going to use an, uh, an array. So I'm going to say this equals, and we're going to use frequency, double clicking on the frequency. And then I'm going to select the data array which is gonna be up top, selecting the same data, dancing ants around the data. And then I'm gonna say comma, and then I'm gonna put my cursor around the bends uh, array. So I'm selecting the bin array here, and then I'm gonna close this up. And what, what this will do is basically spill out the data, right? So I'm gonna say enter, and now it gives me that spill uh, of the data. So the fancy way to do this, obviously a lot faster than this kind of uh, long formula, but I, th I still think the long formula is kind of intuitive uh, uh, to, to look at it as well. So in, in future presentations, we'll kind of continue on with this because I know we're going a little bit long here and we'll do different kind of histograms based on this similar data to see what the shape of the histogram 
will how it will change as we change the data sizes.